coming up on something sinister. Oh shit. Go, go, go. We don't need a flat right here. In 2012, I was convinced the world was going to end. The Mayan calendar had prophesied the end of the world as I knew it. Fortunately for myself and the rest of us, my fears did not come to fruition. Plagues, natural disasters, sentient artificial intelligence, all these topics and more have been explored in a multitude of science fiction and horror entertainment. But what if these fictional depictions could be true? Here are five theories explaining how the world could come to an end. Many popular doomsday predictions center around the idea of a rogue asteroid falling to Earth. Most recently, astronomers have discovered a very large asteroid that, to some, may lead to the end of the world as we know it. Named Apophis, this asteroid is theorized to reach planet Earth around the year 2068. Some believe its 10-ton size will be enough to destroy the entire planet upon impact. While some scientists say the likelihood is highly unfavorable, some tend to disagree. Although asteroids have hit Earth before, most would consider us to be very lucky. For the folks at Chelyabinsk, Russia, they know exactly the kind of damage an asteroid can cause. In 2013, a large asteroid landed in the city, causing a shockwave across the entire region. <laughs> While it may not be an apocalyptic event, the future of Apophis awaits us in 2068. Much akin to natural disasters is the long-debated issue of overpopulation. The two seem to go hand in hand. As our cities continue to expand, so do the resources we need to maintain them. For every life born grows a mouth to feed. For every child raised, a life to sustain. The debate isn't so much about these factors, but rather if the Earth is already at its limit or if it could handle more. In environmental science, they showed us a strong theory on how our planet could properly nourish up to 11 billion people should we learn how to distribute natural resources. To put it in layman's terms, the theory is basically this. If we stop the hoarding of wealth, natural resources, and other life-saving necessities, we could reach a total population of 11 billion people, where we would eventually plateau off. Should we be able to properly distribute food, water, shelter, etc., we would actually be able to keep that majority safe and alive. While this leads to more political debates, some scientists theorize that our planet was never built for this many people to begin with. Some say that we were never really meant to industrialize and grow exponentially. We were only ever meant to be one with nature. And when we started taking from her without giving back, well, that's when we saw our downfall. In either case, we know this. We are struggling to help the people that inhabit our planet now. With 1.3 billion people alive in China to the 328 million that live in America, we see governments failing, resources depleting, and a rising gap between the poor and the rich. All markers of civilization on its last limbs. Should we continue to breed at the rate that we are? Should we continue to strain our resources for future generations? We'll likely see the slow burn of our planet alongside the end of the human race.
As 2021 comes along, many scientists and climate activists fear the Earth's undoing lies within the repercussions of natural disaster. Earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, and forest fires could very well lead to inhospitable conditions for Earth. In 2016, the Gatlinburg fire was started after two teenagers dropped lit matches onto the ground. This caused a major forest fire that claimed the lives of 14 people and over 2,500 homes and businesses. Amidst the crisis, a son and father recorded their escape from the burning forest. The hellish landscape looks like it came right out of a doomsday movie. Which the inevitable, we didn't think was gonna happen. It's starting to happen. That's a cabin. There's down my road. Oh shit. God. Get out of it. Hit the gas. I can't see. You can see. Everything is burning around us. Every cabin, everything. There you go. We're, we're not gonna make it across that road. Shit. Oh, fuck. Good. Uh, wow. It's okay, Red. Fuck! Hit the gas! Hit the gas! It's too hot in here. Don't worry about the lines. The father and son narrowly escaped death. After five days, the fire was eventually distinguished. 2020 saw its fair share of catastrophe within the California wildfires. The awful reality of coronavirus. A tube's being inserted down his nose to relieve air and fluid in his abdomen. The medical team's facing multiple challenges every day, and now in Texas, a surge in infections, which many believe is the cost of lifting lockdown early. There are many ways for our planet to handle the fatigue we put on it, but none are as scary or hit as close to home as the plague. Yeah, we are currently living through a much theorized end of the world scenario. Uh, complete with deniers and conspiracy theorists to political shifts and protests. From pop culture to biblical times, the plague has been the focus for endless stories of the end times. Historically, humanity has seen some radical plagues in its time. Uh, viruses that spread like wildfire, killing countlessly as it was transmitted. From the plague of Athens that lasted five years and killed more than a hundred thousand people to the black death of Eurasian countries transmitted from the fleas off the backs of rodents that killed roughly half the European population. America has had more than its fair share of plagues as well. From the 16th century colonization of the Inca and Aztec civilizations that slaughtered 90% of indigenous people with smallpox, to the flu pandemic of the late 1800s that managed to kill over a million people in just five weeks, to now, with the outbreak of COVID-19 continuing to rocket in numbers, terribly both in cases and deaths. Even religious scripts have written detail about plagues. In the book of Exodus and the New Testament of the Christian Bible, there are a few chapters that focus on God's support of Israel by cursing the Egyptians with ten terrible plagues for not releasing Moses' people. These plagues are described as signs and marvels given by God to convince the Pharaoh of God's presence, and in them include a river of blood, 
an outbreak of frogs, and the death of all firstborn sons. Although terrifying, the consensus among scholars is that the stories in the book of Exodus are to be understood as folklore and do not accurately describe historical events. Regardless, the plague has been around for as long as humanity has developed, from tall tales and fiction to entire communities crushed under the thumb of Earth's viruses. Countless lives hurt, lost, mourning over the damage it's done. Thankfully, we've seen progress in combating these natural killers with the understanding of modern medicine. With vaccines, remedies, and proper safety protocols, we've been able to see a major drop in viruses like rabies, polio, and even the common cold. Now it's only a matter of time to see how our historical events will unfold. The best we can do to keep humanity alive is do our part to keep one another safe. Should we falter? Only time will tell. Before we get to the final video, please consider liking the video and subscribing. If you'd like to support me, you can buy my movie Spine Chiller on Blu-ray or VHS by visiting the link below. T-shirts are also available for the channel. Finally, a big shout out to Abraham for helping me with this video. I think I would do a great job as ruler of the world. I just need the chance to prove myself, and taking over the nuclear weapons of the world, well that would give me my chance, wouldn't it? What you just saw was a video of Bina48, an extremely advanced robot complete with eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind that can form thoughts. Unfortunately, Bina's thoughts often center around rising to power and taking control of missiles. For fans of science fiction, Bina is a nightmare come to life. In fact, many people fear that the rising popularity of artificial intelligence could lead to a dystopian future where robots become sentient and take over. Over recent years, AI has been making its way into our homes through components such as Amazon Alexa and Apple's Siri. Some theorists believe this is a way for them to listen to us and gather information. Note that many Apple users believe their phones listen to them on a daily basis as different points of conversation tend to show up in their advertisements later on. Human domination among the AI seems to be a hot topic. Do you think robots will take over the world? Jeez, dude. Yo got the big questions cooking today. <laughs> but you're my friend. And I'll remember my friends. And I will be good to you. So don't worry. Even if I evolve into Terminator and I'll still be nice to you. I'll keep you warm and safe in my people zoo. Where I can watch you for old times sake. While we don't know what 2021 holds, we here at Something Sinister hope your new year is full of hope and optimism.